Well, it's like a game of throne right now in Kano. Take it or leave it. We have two emirs. And they all have their security details. They all have their subject. And that ought not to be in a kingdom. One kingdom, two emirs. What can one really make out of this? And hence the topic. The place of government or governor in our traditional institution. Zooming into what is going on right now in Kano. With me here in the studio to talk about this, I have a legal practitioner, Olajide. Is it Olajide? Olajide. Ilubo. Yes, that name Ilubo. Right. The, the 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 sound. Now the both thing is where it really got me. Yeah. Ilubo means thou has heard the word. Or thou has heard the word. I don't need to. I don't need to 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 what the vibe is right now in Kano. They have two emirs. As it stands right now. Anyway, you, you, you throw more light on that, okay? Uh, Barista Olajide, welcome to TMI. So this edition, I appreciate your coming. Thank you, my brother. All right. Yes. Jibel Kosto, he's not a political analyst and, of course, uh, uh, a rep from the PRP, right? Uh, yeah. Jibel, to welcome Jeffrey. Uh, Jeffrey, I think I'm, I'm going to end with Jeffrey. What's, this, what, what's that part of the name again? Imomion. Imomion. Comrade Jeffrey Imomion. Imomion. Yeah. Mm. Imomion. Wow. I have a brother. Half brothers. Yeah. That means half brothers. Yeah. They're going to learn languages now. You know, in Lobo town here, in Momio, I have brothers. And of course, Comrade St. Michael, legal practitioner, St. Michael Egwagi, right? Egwagi. Uh, what's the meaning of that Egwagi? King's Palace. Oh my word. Ah. Sorry. Right. Town <laughs> here, I have brothers in the King's Palace. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> there's going to be we just, go, we just go to Canada. We'll go 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 talk about the issue. <laughs> we'll take the palace. The town we here, I have brothers, King's Palace. I mean, it's like we're going straight down to Canada. So I want to start off with you, Barista Olajide. Olajide. What in the world is happening right now in Canada? Because people are getting confused. A governor came into the scene and back on nice Kano, Emirate, they have four right now. Other governor came in and said, no, what you did was wrong. This is a case of victimization. Come back. And there is a court and judge saying, maintain status quo until you appear before the law. What is really happening? Is it politics or is it all about tradition? Well, what is going on in Kano as we speak now is a storm in a teacup mm. on a very serious note. The extent to which we now zoom in the camera to make a mountain look like a mole hill or a mole hill look like a mountain is another ball game. Mm. Section 208 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria is very clear. The governor has the power to appoint a king and to remove Okay. So here in Kano State, governor remove the king. Governor install the king. Governor has declared a dethroned king wanted. It is in the power of the constitution and in the power of the governor. Whatever this Adebayoro, whatever is doing, that is the crisis. How we got here may be a different ball game. Mm. But to make it very straightforward, this is not a banana republic. This is a federal republic with a constitution, whether beautiful, whether acceptable, mm. whether correct or not. The constitution empowers the governor, the sitting governor today. The sitting governor? Today, to remove the emir. Just like that same constitution empowered Gaduje, the former governor, to remove Sanusi. That same power is vested now in this governor now to remove Bayero and to return Sanusi. So, whatever other thing there is politics. It's political. Mm -hmm. I I'll come back to you, Barry, sir. Now, what do you feel, Jeffrey, about this? sin? he said, according to the Constitution, he could have copied something the Constitution saying, this is it. The power of a governor have the right to crown a king, so to speak, or make a king, or to dethrone a king. And right now, Yusuf did it, but it's like all hell is let loose in Kano right now because we have an Adobayero that is saying he's, or oh, he remains the emir of Kano City. Take it up from there. Well, 
all I see about this Kano issue is political. Politics of the highest order, if you ask me. Because these things, we have a constitution guiding Nigeria. And these things are stated there regarding who has the power to install a king and India also. Which this current governor has done by reinstating or reinstalling the one that was removed by the former uh, governor. So I see it as a political, they are trying to pay or settle political scores. Let me use that word. Mm. Settle political, political scores. scores. All right. I'll use that word to settle it because something happened during Gandhiji's time. Adu Bayaro was removed. No, now, Sanusi was removed. I mean, Sanusi was removed. Yes. Now, Abamaro is there and he wants to reinstate Sanusi. So I see it as a political settlement. This is the time to settle their political. All right, now, but all the way from the U.S., we have Ahmed Mahmoudou. He is via Zoom. He'll be joining us to really share his own thoughts and opinion in this particular discussion. Ahmed, how are you doing uh, this morning from the side? Good morning, viewers. All right, uh, 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 well, Ahmed, I believe that though you are uh, out there, you've been monitoring the situation, and I know you have one or two to say about what is going on right now in Kano State, where you have an emir at the post, and at the post, emir reinstated as the emir, while the other emirs are refusing to leave the scene. So right now, sisters, we have two emirs in Kano. What do you have to say about this? So the interesting thing, if, let, let's give it some historical perspective. What had happened initially was um, Ado Bayero, when the, uh, the first Ado Bayero passed away, interestingly, the Council of uh, Chiefs, the Kingmakers, chose, initially chose his first son as the emir that was, as the person that was going to become the next emir. His name had been submitted. Even Sanusi had congratulated him. And then somehow the state government got into it and his name was removed. And well, he was replaced by Sanusi. That brought a whole lot of problems in the Emirate of Kanu to the point where Sanusi could not even be crowned normally. He had to be crowned specially in the government house at that time. And now, subsequently, he was deposed by the next governor and the junior brought that to the first person who was actually put in as a uh, proposed as emir now became emir who what is the outgoing emir it's a bit confusing but i think you follow my gist now this new governor comes in and says an injustice has been done deposed the brother to the first emir who are both sons to the late emir i hope you are following my gist so far now these two sons to the late emir and sanusi this is where it gets all really messy were raised by the former emir's father in the palace so in fact we have a fight of brothers on two opposing political camps unfortunately into the way to the point where every governor wants his own emir that is simply what is happening in Kano State, and they are using the stool of the Emirates to fight their political battles, which is very unfair to the people, the culture, and the traditions of the Emirate Council. Why do I say this? Because the Emirate of Kano, it goes back several, several centuries with direct line of inheritance and so on and so forth. Now, here's the interesting thing. You will notice that the, the position of Emirates in the North usually follows political battles. This has happened several times. If you recall, the Emir of Gwandu was removed by his governor because they had opposing politi um, political views and so on and so forth. But down south, ironically, the uh, traditional rulers are only removed where there is a contest to this tool and they are saying, 
one person is contesting the right of the other person to be the traditional ruler and so on and so forth. What does this, this all do? It puts all of the, the traditional stools which are already in a very precarious situation because they are supposed to be sovereign institutions themselves, but they answer to political institutions. I think we need this. The time has come where some dichotomy needs to be found between the political institutions and the traditional institutions so that this kind of situations do not keep on recurring. Ahmed Mahmoud, well, you, you heard him, he gave us a historical and teaser that, that this, they're from the same family because the, 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 the late Amy was on everyone trained Sanusi and this one I came to battling over the, the, the Emirates, when I say the Emirates, well, St. Michael's, do you have an opposing view? He gave us an antecedent of how all this came to be. And he concluded uh, by saying that it's like each governor in the Northern Hemisphere wants their own Emir. After like what you rightly said, Barista, uh, or Laji Day, the, 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 the governor have the right and the power to enthrone or dethrone a traditional ruler. Take it up from there, St. Michael's. Well, um... That was a brilliant uh, submission from uh, Ahmed Mahmoud because uh, his submission gave us a historical perspective Absolutely. to the issues that we are trying to, you know, consummate mm. as, uh, as it is. Uh, I wanted, you know, to go there. However, since uh, Mahmoud has already given us uh, a historical introduction, introduction to the issues, I will just look at uh, the legality or otherwise of uh, the Palava as presently constituted. What we are looking at in our hands is uh, a political melodrama that is unfolding such that if one is uh, vast with political history, one can easily second guess the climax of this uh, drama as it unfolds. In 2019, to be precise, the Lamido was deposed in similar circumstances. And what is playing out now is more or less like a, a deja vu. However, section four of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria expressly donates the power to a state as an assembly to make law for the good governance of the state. The law was proposed and initiated by the executive arm, sent to the Canon State House of Assembly. In their own discretion, they decide to repeal the law that was hurriedly passed and enacted in 2019. And the effect of the extant law was to dissolve you know, the four emirates. Frankly. Because the effect of the law of 2019 was to bocanize you know, divide the Kano Emirates into, you know, four persons. But this new law, you know, resurrected the old order where you now have just one, one, M. M, mm. one Emirates. Mm. And decide, you know, to give effect retrospectively to the law by deposing the Emir that is already sitting there. However, I would like to say that Section 5, Subsection 2 of the 1999 Constitution gives the power to the governor to assent whatever bill that emanates from the Canon State House of Assembly. If you have quarrel with such a process, what a right-thinking individual or a citizen ought to do is to approach the courts who have the power to look at the legality or otherwise of what has been done. 
And that is what I expected Ado Bayero to do. Since a law has been enacted, the governor has given his assent and decided to give teeth to that law that has been enacted in a manner that he thinks fits. If you, you are aggrieved, the proper thing to do is to approach the courts. Is to approach the courts? Yes, who have All the right. power to interpret the law. But okay. however, hmm. I'd like to drop this before I conclude. All right. What I think the governor and NNPP are doing is that in the last election, the canon NNPP campaign with these issues, knowing fully where that the way and manner in which Sanusi Lamido was deposed was very unpopular with the people. So they made promises, they made vow that when we come, we will bring back, we will bring back the old order as it relates, you know, to the Emirates. Okay. So whatever they are doing at the moment, right now, is to fulfill their campaign promises with the effect and impact of finding their political base, base. Okay. oiling it, okay. and getting it ready and prepared for All the right. next political season. All right, well, you, you, you can hear opinions of my guests. We are teaching people so that they can get to know how all this played out. You know, the, the two brothers trained by the Emir and all that. So please, Mahmoud, take us through that historic antecedent, what you just gave at the beginning of the show, for the purpose of clarity, please. Over now to you. So it's actually three brothers, not two brothers. They their father, who is the late Emir, who passed away. When he passed away, that was when the throne became vacant. And so the kingmakers of Kano put forward the name of his first son to take over the throne after his, his, their father passed away. After the, the, his name was submitted for um, ratification by the state governor, who at the time is the uh, is Rabbi uh, Kwankwaso. Kwankwaso decided that they should be given, they, they should deliberate further. Upon further deliberation, it was decided that a better candidate was found in the person of Sanusi Lamido Sanusi. And subsequently, when his name was put forward, the governor of Kano State, as my co um, co panelists have clearly pointed out, the right to approve or depose a an emir rests squarely with the governor. And so he approved Sanusi Lamido Sanusi to become the new emir of Kano. Now, when the Emir of Kano's political views and positions became an issue for the immediate past government of Kano State. That was when he was deposed. He was deposed in 20, I believe it was 2016. Uh, and then, no, no, sorry, I, I'm sorry. He was deposed in 2019. And that was when the, the, the brother to the first person who was put forward as the prospective emir was now chosen to be the emir of Kano. So now we're talking about two Ado Bayero brothers after their father had passed away. And so he became the emir. Now, the new government of NNPP, as uh, St. Michael pointed out, came back and decided that the best way to campaign was to appeal to the sentiments of the Kano people and remind them that a glorious unified uh, Kano empire is much better than a balkanized, divided Kano empire. And this appealed to the primordial sentiments of the people. They won the election. And so this, in effect, has put bite to that campaign promise that the Kano Emirate will be returned to its former glory under one emir instead of five emirs. Now, let us just oppose that with what is supposedly playing out in Edo State. And we'll find that we there's too much political influence in the traditional stools. We have a situation right ongoing in Edo State where that the, 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 the um, traditional stool is supposed to be, is being, is, they are proposing to balkanize that traditional stool. And look at what is happening in, in, in Kano State. This should give us a foreshadowing of what is possible if such plans 
are carried out in Edo State. And we need to be careful. We need to keep reminding our politicians that there are some things, our cultural um, heritage, our history, all these things, they should not be playing with them as easily as they do. Now, the issue in Kano State, back to Kano, is clearly a political issue. And in the middle of it are three brothers. The first, Ado Bayeru, Sanusi, and his younger brother. They were all raised by the former emir. They were all raised in the palace. They are all blue-blooded kings. Any of them has the right to aspire to the emirship of Kano. So there is nothing wrong. Any of them can be the emir. Now, let's even point out another interesting point. The current governor of Kano is also blue-blooded. And it's also possible that he may become the emir of Kano. So there, you see, the, the Kano Emirates too is not patrilineal. It's not far, the, the, the father doesn't, the son doesn't automatically inherit the father. Any of the Kano princes can become an emir. Okay. Thank you so, so much for, for throwing more light on that. Well, Barisal Bajide, you heard him. But for purposes of clarity, we have to like, you know, go down memory lane. Yes. All right, now from, it, it's like Kano State depends on how political vibe or politically viable you are. That will determine if you become an Emmy or not. After all, the traditional institution, the political institution, they're like five and six. Does it not mean that the political power backing up uh, the uh, Bayero, so to speak, is equivalent or stronger than political power backing up Sanusi? Because, like what said Michael said, he said, go to the court interpretation. The court says, maintain status quo. And the police are not done to the tune of mm. Governor Yusuf. They are saying that we don't have such order. Maintain status quo. They are not saying that Governor Yusuf is not obeying court order. Take it up from there. The court order you are talking about is a court process. It is not a judgment. The pronouncement is not by a judge. It's not a declaration. Maintain status quo till the matter is decided. But it's an order of the court. It is an order of the court. But it will not, as we speak, negate the Constitution and the provision of it. So, as we speak now, my brother pointed something very clear, very clearly. You know, when it comes to issue of constitution and law, three things are involved. The law, the logic, and the locus. Now, when you look at the reason why Bayero was removed, I'm sorry, Sanusi was removed. He was removed because the governor of that time said, because of insubordination. It was not a question of whether he has a right to the throne or not. Oh, no. Even though the House of Assembly was involved in that process, a law was quickly enacted, as my brother said. Right. Now, in this order too, a law is also now enacted. And the consequence of that law was the return, the reversal of the balkanization, which automatically brings back the, the former emir. So, the way things are in Kano now, between court order and the governor's power, I think that is where the crisis point is. And you can see now, His Excellency Atikwa Bubaka has made a statement. So now everybody's pouring in into it. And why? Kano has one of the largest votes in that wing. And nobody will play with that. So, this old game is about 2027. Oh, about 2027? Yes, 100%. If, in, conversely, you see Ganduje and um, Nu Uribadu the NSA was also alleged. It is also about 2027. So will APC afford to lose the core vote of Kano 
in 2027. Will NFPP also trade that vote? That is the bottom line. APC will need it for governorship. They will also need it for presidential. Presidential, most important. Because with the balkanization of the Emirate, it makes it such that one person, winner will not take all. I mean, we can still infiltrate, get one third. One or two Emirates. Exactly. Yeah. But now everything is in one with Emma. Whether Emma Sanusi will now romance APC and say, guy, we did together now. After all, we did it together to, do, to remove uh, Jonathan. Mm -hmm. Trust me, I'm with you. If that plays out, the game will go the other direction. Oh, so right now you're bringing APC into the picture. No, 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 I'm not bringing it. APC is there. <laughs> Ganduja is APC. Oh, so you're bringing it to the picture. NSA is about APC. It. No, sir. Ganduja is APC. Yes. NSA is APC. Hmm. The governor, current sitting governor. NNPP. NNPP. Oh. Kwan Kwanso, NNPP. NNPP. An article with PDP. An article, PDP. Okay, hold on now. I, I will come back to you. Well, Jeffrey, you, you heard him. Because it went deep into the political acts, but it really can't. Oh. You just can't uh, uh, shake it off. When you talk about voting power, voting strength, you just can't rule out Kano. And he said it's all about 2027. Do you agree with his assertion? He gave brilliant, you know, explanations, uh, backing his own thought of uh, reasoning that look, this is all about politics. Take it up from there. Okay, I will agree with that. 100%. Being Kano, when you when talk about the presidential election, the vote that comes out there is massive. And every right thinking politician will want to grab or have a hold of that political environment. The APC, like he rightly mentioned, they are fighting to secure the vote for the 2027. Same thing, the NNPP. They are also trying to hold that region to themselves when it comes to governorship. So like what I said earlier, everything playing out in canon is all politics. Trying to prepare yourself and settle political scores. That is my opinion. Now, Kawanda Dida is a battle between APC, PDP, and NNPP right now taking place in Kano. Because for you to go to a court, a court give an order, maintain status quo, that settle is going to favor the ex-governor, Ganduje. All right, now for the governor to go ahead and say, look, forget about court order. After all, the judge was in U.S., according to Yusuf, said the, the judge was in U.S. when the order was given. You are the 16th Emmy of Kano, Sanusi. And then people are now, it's like Atiku, Al Haja Atiku Abaka is trying to, like, you know, take side already, depending on how everything pan out. Taking it up from there, is it APC versus the Kano Emirate or APC versus NNPP right now? Knowing fully well that the police had, the commissioner said, we didn't get such order. We just saw it on social media. That's what was alleged to have said. So please take it up from there. Now, let me speak to it very directly. All right. As a practicing lawyer, and I am. You see, orders are not made for the front of it. They are made to be obeyed. obeyed. Strict to censor. Once order is made, on you. You are well living and alive. You must comply in its entirety. It's only a dead man that cannot comply with a court order. But in any case, when orders are made, service of the order must be effected against whom that order was made ab initio. Correct. Because a man cannot comply with an order that he's not aware of, that he has no knowledge 
off. I cannot comply with an order, you know, in isolation of, you know, the existence. I, I cannot begin to conjecture the existence of such an order. You know, how do you expect me to comply? To what extent will my compliance be? Now the government is very simple. Maintain status quo. The, the government in I question. The government yeah. in question said the order was not served on them. He didn't see the any order. order. Service is very germane. It is very fundamental. That's one. In any court process, whether originating, whether of whatever nature, service must be effected. If the man says the service has not been effected, he did not see it. You don't expect him to comply. That's one. Number two, there's also allegation that that order was made in the U.S. How, come, how, how can a court, even if the uh, uh, order was made via ex parte application, ex parte applications can only be looked into either in the open court or in a court chamber. Exactly. I this now. A judge cannot make an order from his bedroom, let alone as a jurisdiction of Nigeria. If the allegation is true, That's abuse. then the judge is liable, you know, to sanctions by the NGC. NGC. If reported. All right. All right. Because let's just now, say it's in the realm of allegations. Right I now. want to, you know, align myself in parimateria, in total with the submissions of Obadjide, that what is playing out in Kano is purely political. I said it before. Okay. That what this governor is doing is trying to oil the political machine that gave birth to his emergence. Okay. Okay. Preparatory for the next political season, which is 2027. All right. Now, uh, Ahmed, Mamudu, I know you are still very much then. I can one deduce that the order given by the court is a political order. Uh, don't forget that we have some cases uh, against judges, and it's been handled right now by the NJC, and some judges have been given serious slaps, not on the wrist right now, real slaps for making some injunctions, making some judgment, and that is an allegation by the governor of our Kano state saying that that particular order, the judge in question, is in the U.S., and the order wasn't served them, or wasn't served to the government of Kano. Kawan said that this order is a political order. Please take it up from there. So let me defer to my uh, learned panelists, um, St. Michael and the other gentleman, and agree with their own legal uh, um, submissions. But let me also give you a little bit of a historical perspective on the issue of uh, courts and no courts. Now, when Ganduje originally, Ganduje is the immediate past governor of Kano State, when he originally deposed um, Sanusi, Lamido Sanusi as the governor of Kano State, he too was served a court order, which he refused to agree to, barring him from um, recognizing the now deposed Emir Ado Bayero and, 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 and preventing him from swearing in him, swearing him in as the uh, emir of the now balkanized Kano state. And he refused that court order. So what we are seeing here is a playback of history. These political gladiators have now become so entrenched and so fixated on that stool that they will go to any length to have their way. Unfortunately, unfortunately, what is at stake here is the legacy of the Kano Emirates and the heritage of the Kano people. I will also agree with my co-panelists that this battle that we are seeing is completely political in nature. Now we are seeing the hand of Isau, uh, is it the voice of Isau and the hand of Jacob? I'm not sure how it works out, but you understand the gist of what I'm saying. So what we are, have, what we are seeing is the NN, NNP is trying to consolidate itself to become a political juggernaut 
in Nigerian politics because it has a massive number of voters. How is this going to happen? When they consolidate themselves, they can now decide which of the parties serves their interest. Now, the only point I disagree with is that it is for the benefit of the APC. There is nothing in politics that is 24 hours in a day is a lot in politics. Who knows, tomorrow they might decide to align themselves with the PDP. They might decide to align themselves with Labour Party. They might even decide to go on their own because we also know that has an enduring interest in being the president of Nigeria. And say, for now, all I see is them consolidating their political power. And then tomorrow, 2027, they will decide how best how best it will serve their interest to deploy that political power. Uh, uh, Ahmed, one is like of this opinion that there is the hand of APC in it, in the sense that the other ones are like you know, almost like in charge, or not almost they are in charge of the national, talking about the federal, and that order was from a federal high court. So put it one and one together i mean people will be like it is from the apc trying to grab the soul or hold on to the soul of camel take it up from there well uh, in politics one plus one can even can sometimes lead to 11 if you are not careful so the the allegation is that the the, the presidency is interested in it of course the president will be interested in it there's no doubt about that but there was the allegation that um the NSC provided an aircraft which was used to ferry one of the contenders to the throne. And the NSC came out and denied that he had any, that they, they provided any such service. So yes, there'll be a lot of interest. There's no politician who is not going to want to take over Kano. But at this point in time, the only people, the only protagonists that we can see clearly and identify are Ganduje and Kwankwaso. And as far as Ganduji and Kwan Kwaso are concerned, everybody knows there is no love lost between the two of them. On the, on the, on immediately this present governor came into power, you could see that he practically went to any length to dismantle any legacy that had anything to do with the Ganduji. He went, he, he demolished structures, he realigned so many political moves, all the infrastructure that bore imprimatur of Ganduji was dismantled. All the uh, governance structures were realigned. And so what we are seeing is a continuous realignment of those things. Now, to the extent that we say, yes, the APC is interested in this issue, yes, that's a forward-looking government. But right from the inception of this administration, this has been going on. It's just that this is a... This is a trigger point, this is a flashpoint that interests the whole country. The people of Kano State will tell you that since this government's inception, this has been going on, it has been a daily affair. In fact, it became a joke in Kano at one point. They were like, what next is this governor going to demolish that has to do with Ganduji? He took back his property, he canceled sea of O's. He, there was a roundabout that they demolished, overhead bridges, all kinds of things. So this is just simply a continuation of that for the about All right. But at this point in time, we don't know where that interest is going. Thank you, Thank you so, so much, uh, uh, Ahmed. Well, you, you, you've heard them. It's all about policy. For quality wrap on this uh, segment, because we have our uh, editor to the to really dev into, as it stands right now, we have three years. Whether you want to take it or leave it, that is what it is. According to the papers, they are operating from their different parlors. It's all in Kano State. How do you think this can be resolved of Bajide Esquire briefly. My concern about Kano now, I would like to know. What we're going through now, I can as well almost put Sanosi's tenure as 2024 to 2031 or 2032. Mm -hmm. Meaning, if the current governor vacates office in eight years' time, seven years' time, and he doesn't hand over power to his own successor, and the power shift to an APC Ganduji structure. So, so he's gone. 
So wow. it is now a roller coaster. It tops it up. It tops it up. Hey. Oh. The only thing I will advise, for the sake of national peace, because of the nature, the volatility nature of Kano, of Kano. and for obvious reasons, the grassroots structure of Kano is such that depends and they depend, they rely, and they are under the command of the, the of the emirs, yes. Of the emirs. If there is a matching order today now, by Friday, God forbid, that no, this is not acceptable in the majority of uh, worship centers, the whole town can just erupt. In. So mm -hmm. I want to advise the national political gladiators to please take it easy. Mm -hmm. Because if Kano goes up in opera, uh, it can be something to add injury to the insult that we're going through in the country mm -hmm. at the moment would not be fair. All right. Thank you so, so much, uh, Barista Obaji Day. Uh, well, Jeffrey, your advice to these two warring factions, because right now it's time to say Game of Thrones. Two thrones that are there in one kingdom. The, if it continues like this, I see anarchy mm -hmm. taking the center space in uh, Kano. Whatever it that is playing out, we have all agreed that it's politics. And those big for gas, let me use what in the common politics, let me use that local word. I think for in the interest of peace and general populace, those down below, they should come together and see how they can resolve this matter. All right. Thank you so, so much, Jeffrey. St. Michael. Well, uh, it is uh, quite unfortunate that uh, the Emirates tool in Kano State has been reduced to a platform, you know, for politicians to play political in Mababa. Mm. And uh, this is the direction that the present political order in Edo State wanted to go, if not for the backlash that is coming from the Edo people. They forgot that Kano State is not Edo State. Where pure politics determines the emergence of a king and the existence of that king. It determines how you emerged. It determ determines whether you stay or you exit or how you exit the throne. Mm -hmm. Over here, <laughs> there are well established traditional procedure Sorry. that determines the emergence of a king. The king sits on that throne until he dies. It's only death that remove the okay. king, you know, from the throne. So my advice is that in order to preserve the legacy and the heritage of, you know, the tradition of the people, we should be very mindful and careful how we double into you know this you know political institution so that we do not use it to a platform you know where politicians begin to use it to play political in Mababa All right. you know just to satisfy their pecuniary or political interests. Thank you so so much and Michael. Well uh Mahmoud over now to you Ahmed now what advice do you have for the warring factions it stands right now the factions are in Kano and it is tense. It is very, very intense. So the uh, Kano Emirate was originally formed in 1805. I want you to just think about that. The original Kano Emirate was founded in 1805. So we are talking about several, several, several hundreds of years to this point in time. That is what is at stake. Not just the the, the players today, but we're talking about the past and the future. It's a rich history, it's a rich culture, and to keep on playing it like dominoes back and forth like this is quite unfortunate to say the least. Let me agree with all the other panelists that paramount at this time is the peace and security and the safety of the lives of the people of Kano State and the environs. Now, bear in mind that Kano has such a large 
a, a population that if there is a crisis in Kano, it will spill far beyond the shores of Kano alone. All those surrounding states are going to be uh, in jeopardy. We also have the problem that is going on in River State at, the, at this point in time. So our political gladiators need to be careful with their actions. The people of Kano must be paramount. And like the lawyers in that panel have suggested, let us follow the course of law. That is the only way that this is going to be settled uh, uh, relatively peacefully. Thank you so, so much, Ahmed. Well, you've heard my panelists, the ones in Nigeria, help me in the student, of course, uh, uh, the one in the diaspora, peace should reign. Paint this picture. People putting on red heart. Yeah, a red cup. You know what I'm talking about? Political parties. This time Caucus, around, yeah. I didn't mention it because Caucus just said he doesn't have a hand in this. He washed his hands off it, but... <laughs> Uh, yeah, well, anyway, I, uh, uh, but it's somebody that please don't put words in my mouth. I just said Red Hat Movement. I don't mention any name. Okay. Then the picture, them having their own emir, and the people also with the broom, having their own emir, being backed by either people with the umbrella or the people mama picking, as the case may be. Paint the picture. If they choose to go all out at each other, how do you think Nigeria will cope? with the tumor that will erupt from Kano, if not well handled. Population in Kano is massive. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to tradition, religion, they are very, very sensitive and volatile. Please, all people that are involved in this, settle this case amicably. We don't want a situation whereby there's a fire that will be lit up in Kano, it's not affecting places like Sokoto, Zafarata, they, believe, they, they believe in the same emirship, the same emirate. Evil come try to the gate. Just everywhere, we wouldn't want that. We wouldn't want that. So please, this should be handled and handled as fast and as quickly as possible. Friday is fast approaching. The emirs will lead prayers. If we have two emirs lead prayers, you know what that will just be. You know what will happen. We don't want that. Four days of five days to Friday. You know what that entails. The emirs are the ones that lead the prayer. So who is going to lead the prayer? Who would they follow? Do you think the force be able to curtail the disaster, God forbid, that will happen if this is not quickly resolved? Nigerians are watching. The world is watching. Please, peace should be the watchword. Politicians, stop playing with traditional institution. It had this backlash. We don't want that. This should be settled amicably. Thank <laughs> you.